Calibrite have launched a new software called Calibrite Profiler. Right now, it is in a beta format. You can download and play with the software. And just based on what I'm seeing so far with this new software from Calibrite, I think this is going to bring a lot of profound change to our creative color workflow going forward. Let's have a look at this software. We'll do some demo calibration and I'll go over some of the aspect of this software as well. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. To download your own beta version of Calibrite Profiler software and be on the bleeding edge of color control for creative workflow, simply go to calibrite.com. And what you're going to do is hover over software, click on Calibrite Profiler. This will open a new page with a link to download right there in the middle. And as you scroll down, it will talk about some of the new features that are in this software. And speaking of software, I already download this, installed it on my system. So let's have a look at Calibrite Profiler. Now, you may be wondering what's the difference between Calibrite Profiler and the other two software that have come before it, Color Checker Profiler and Color Checker Studio. Well, the one big thing that I can see right now between these two is that there are obviously code base improvement. The ease of use have been improved as well. But the big thing is that Calibrite have really merged those two software together. So they have merged Color Checker Profiler and also Color Checker Studio together into this one software called Calibrite Profiler. So depending on the device that you've purchased, well, that device would act as the activation for all the different features. So now you have one central hub for color control. You don't have to decide whether I'm going to download this software or that software that I download the right one. You will simply download Calibrite Profiler software and you're ready to go. So with this software, you can do a few things. You can calibrate monitors, projectors, you can profile cameras, scanner printers, and there's also a utility section we'll, which we'll cover in just a moment. Now, because this is a beta software, a lot of functions right now are grayed out. However, I have been testing this software. I have been calibrating numerous display with it. And I can tell you that the calibration module and also the ICC profile produced from this software is good and I have no problem with it. I'm already using this beta ICC profile that is generating in my professional workflow. So just a little FYI on that one. And right below that, you have the device. This is the one that you have plugged in the computer. So whichever one you have plugged in, they will activate the different functions that are available to you. So you can see Color Checker Display, Display Pro, Display Plus, and Color Checker Studio. So we're going to do monitor calibration. I have this on advanced already. I'm going to choose, well, basic. I'm not going to do that. I'm showing you that there is a basic function. I'll click on advanced. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you utilities. In this screen, you have the option to do monitor uniformity. So you can do a uniformity check as a, let's see here, as a grid of three by three. You can certainly do that. We're not going to go through that just yet. So we'll click on back. You can do a validation to check the profile later on down the road. You have the preset manager. And the nice thing about the preset manager is let's say I have a workflow and a color calibration process that works really well and you want to use it. What I can simply do is create a preset out of those provide a link for you to download. You can just download it and pretty much just implement it on your system by loading it in. You don't have to dial any setting whatsoever. So that is really awesome. Let's go back here at the very bottom and let's start with the monitor calibration in advance. Right now I have the color checker display plus link up to the system. All right. So a few things to note of this is that you have the option to choose the display you want to calibrate the color LCD. That's the one built into my laptop and I can choose it to match the photo pre-press video. I can do a custom or the save preset where I can load in a preset. If I don't want to do anything else, and if I verify that the settings on the top here works for what I need, I simply click on next, click on start measurement, and then click on continue one more time, and I am right there at the calibration screen. So it's only about three to four clicks before you get to the calibration screen. You no longer have to verify all these other settings in the program, unlike Color Checker Profiler software. But if you want to go in and customize a setting, well, you can still certainly do that. So I'm going to go back. And right now I have the BenQ EX480UZ. This is their latest Mobius display lineup. It is a 48 inch OLED display, 120 Hertz, 4K, and it has amazing color capability. 
and a really quick response time. So we're going to be calibrating this display for this demo and I'm super excited to be testing and playing with this display anyway. The backlight, what I'm going to do is choose OLED for this one because it is an organic LED. So we're going to do that. And we're going to customize some of the settings a little bit. So for example, we're going to take a look at the white point. The default is D65. The luminance is 120. Normally I calibrate anywhere between a range of 80 to 120. I tend to live in the 80 nits or 80 candela range because it's better for my print. But for this demo, we'll just use 120. I can click on the native at the very top. This is the contrast option. So I can choose native or I can type in a custom contrast value that I want based on different things. I can do a custom black point. I can do a measured black point if I want to. I can use gamma 2.2 or I can still do custom. You can dial in a custom value, use sRGB. And the device that I have, the color checker display plus, what this can also do is BT1886 as well. But I'm going to leave this at 2.2 because I'm doing photos. Below that, there are options for ambient auto adjust, flare correction, I normally leave these all off and all these default tends to work really well. One thing that I've noticed as well is that the software for both Mac and PC default to ICC profile version two to eliminate any conflict with the operating system and ICC version four. So they're really playing it safe on this one. And lastly, you have the option to choose how many patch sets you wanna use, very similar to the color checker profiler software that have come before. Standard, Advanced, and Advanced Plus, which has 461. Normally, I would choose the largest, but for now, what I'm going to do is choose 118. And right below that, you see the option to add from image. You can certainly load in an image right now. I don't think this function is available yet in beta version, but what the software is going to do is from that image, pick a few colors out and add that to the patch set of Advanced Plus. So you have extra patches that it's going to measure and account for the color correction. All right, I'm gonna simply click on next and I'm gonna say this is the color checker display plus start measurement. What I'm simply gonna do right now is set this display into sRGB color mode. We're not gonna change too much of it at the moment. We're just gonna simply do a calibration just to demo the software. So the only adjustment I have on this display realistically is brightness. So I'll do that and this is a new interface. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's tilt the screen back. And there's a guide on how to rotate the device that you have. Verify that the device is laying flat on the display that has also been tilted back so that there's no stray light going in. Right now we're going to look at the luminous value and because this display has just been opened up, so everything is super bright right now, let's bring this down to around 120 candela or 120 nits, which I think is around 87, 88. Let's do 89. Okay, that is right at 120. And as usual, before you do display calibration, do go into your settings on both Mac and PC, turn off True Tone, turn off Auto Brightness, turn off HDR on the display, and also leave the display running for at least, I would say, 15 to 20 minutes, if not 30 minutes as well. What I'm gonna do is click on Next, and we'll start the measurement process. So this is telling us that it's measuring 118 patches, a total number of patches that is measuring is 118. On the very bottom, you can see that there is a countdown how many patches you have left to measure, and it's dividing this all out. So the moment this bar is filled, well, the calibration is done. But what this is doing right now is that it's giving you a visual feedback as far as how far the progress is on the calibration and it tells you to leave that device in a circle. So what I'm gonna do is have this finished calibration. I'll jump back when this is almost done. We'll go over some, a few of the other features in this software and we'll kind of do a wrap up about it. All right, so we have a few patches remaining. I really love the countdown and the progress bar as it going through measuring different colors. This is a really great visual indicator. So right now what it's doing is an iterative calibration process. It measures a few extra colors at the end there. And what I'm simply going to do is click on next. So the program tells you to please remove the device from the display and replace the diffuser over lens. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to validate this calibration just right after. But when you click on next, what it's showing you right now, this is the actual 
measurement from the display in each different circles. So that's also really neat. I'm going to click on next and this is the part where I would save the profile. What I'm going to do now is pull this to the side and I'm not going to put the cover on it yet. And that's a nice thing about this software too is that you don't have to physically go to the device, put the cover on in order for you to save the profile. If you didn't do that, I mean, that's more of a suggestion rather than you have to really do it. So what I'm going to do is name this sRGB. And you can also set a calibration reminder to have one, two, three, and four weeks option. My recommendation is to go in and recalibrate your display every two to at least like, you know, if at the longest, probably every four weeks or so, because your display, even though they are using an LCD technology and it ships way less than the previous technology, especially like CRT, they do shift over time. So it's always a good idea to keep your display in proper color and good shape by just calibrating it every so often and a reminder definitely help. So I'm going to click on save there and this is going to save the profile. And now I am at this screen where I can do a comparison between what have come before and after. So this is pretty much the after. I can click on before and you can see like there are some minor changes to display. You can click on different picture samples for instance and you can also see a chart. A few other things that you can do as well as you can load your own pictures in if you want to. For instance, it tells you some of the file format to load. I'm not going to do that just yet. And there are three slots that you can do that with. There is the profile information and you can see how the profile is really coming out. So for example, this is the profile we have compared to sRGB. We're able to get a color space or color gamut in sRGB mode that is a little bit larger than sRGB. I'll throw in Adobe RGB, Profoto, um, let's not do Profoto, let's do P3. So you can kind of see where the color gamut is aligned at this point in time. So from there, what I'm simply going to do is I can do another thing is to take a look at the curve and also the volume of the profile. So for instance, this is what an sRGB profile would look like. This is the one from our calibration. and. Just from the overlap so far, it's slightly larger in certain areas and it's doing a pretty good job showing us what profile we're getting. So the next thing we're going to do is come and click on validation at the bottom. So when it comes to validation, you can do a few things. You can do the industry standard target or you can choose patches from images or generate patches from a few images that you have. What I'm simply going to do is use the industry standard target. And what I really like about this software is the fact that I can do Color Shaker Classic with 24 patches or I can do digital SG with 96. So for sake of time, what we're going to do is just use 24 patches for now. I'll click on next. The device is still on my screen. It's laying flat. So I'm just going to simply click on next, have this run of validation, and let's see what Delta E we're able to get out of this calibration. Also, don't forget to click on start measurement. Otherwise, it would just sit there and not advance to the next screen. Notice a few things as well as that a countdown progress is still on the bottom of the screen and you see the colors popping up as an indicator as it goes along. So the squares or the rectangles are much larger because there are less patches being measured. Another good visual indicator for the progress that you're going through when you're doing the display color calibration. All right, now it tells you to remove the device and replace the diffuser. We're going to do that, but I'm going to click on next first. So based on the results so far, the default is Delta EAB 2000, which I think it is a great value to use. What I'm going to do is change the metrics a little bit because I think that 7 and 14 is a bit high. And in general, what I want to do is have the average be 2 and have the max be around 3. So let's do around 3 and let's see if this display pass. And yes, it passes without any issue. So there's that pass fail box right there. So on average right now, this display can show an average Delta E result of 0.7, which is absolutely amazing. And the max Delta E for a few of the colors on this display, that particular one color is 1.7. This is still under two. So the colors that I'm getting right now are considered to be really great and really accurate. What I can also do is save this report out and I'll save this as a PDF. I'll put this on the desktop. Normally I would name this, but I'm going to skip this for now because I'm just doing this demo. You can take a look at the result and when you're done, you click on finish. Now you have the option to go back into the various utility to do a uniformity. You can do a validation again. You can check the profile manager. But anyway, this is 
Calibrite profiler software. I think that Calibrite have done a lot of really great things with this software. So anyway, I hope that you find this walkthrough, this guide, this overview for Calibrite profiler software helpful. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. And what I'm gonna do down the road as well is make a guide for Calibrite profiler software specific to different display type that I have done in the past with Color Checker Profiler or i1 Profiler software. So that's in the work as well. I think I might wait until the software is out of beta first or because the display function is working just fine. I might just do the video soon. Let me know what your thoughts about that is. But anyway, I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that at all, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And in art we trust.